Hello and what's going on, guys? Welcome to the show. We were just talking about, we don't even have a name for it, but we're going to call <laughs> it the show. You know, yep. it's all about giving you the value, both of us. We got the world king, Fatty Andy, in the house. What's going on, man? What's going on, my brother, King Adam? How are you? Absolutely. Adam Shelton, King Adam here. And we're excited to bring some more value back to you, to you. Yes. Because yes. we care about you, right? Ain't that right? Absolutely, man. What are we going to be talking about today, Adam? Man, you know what? We're going to be talking about branding. We're going to talk all about branding, five tips that can really, really help you brand today in 2020 and beyond. Mm -hmm. Because it's all about the brands, all about what you're all about, what you stand for, what's your mission statement, and what you're going to offer to the marketplace. Now, how Absolutely. do you feel about branding? You know a lot about <laughs> it. Tell me what's your experience with branding. Uh, you know, in my opinion, I believe that everything is is a brand. I mean, uh, you need, you know, every business should be treated as a brand. And I believe that the difference between a small business, right, the small business person, the the person who has a um, a barber shop, right, mm -hmm. in your in your local in your local plaza. What separates that person from the great clips or the supercuts or the other big brands? is just that branding, right? right? Is yeah. the simple fact that the small business owner doesn't take the time to brand themselves. They just focus on the business and the big business realizes that it's the brand that sells and that that should be the ultimate focus. It's just like Apple. Apple's the biggest mm -hmm. brand in the world, yeah. which also happens to get people to buy them, right? Because it's the branding. That's literally what Apple is all about. And so I, I firmly believe that branding is key for everybody. Yeah, I know. Yo, and it leads us to the first actually tip of branding strategies. So we can go ahead and start off with the first one. And that's defend, define your brand and your strategy. And you really talked about Apple. Because, you know, when I think about Apple, I can see the logo. Mm -hmm. I can see the logo. Mm -hmm. I can see yep. the color. And that's part of branding is colors. And yep. it's about mission statements, about you know slogans, you know slogans. Yep. You remember, and yes, it's about yes, right. It ain't about slogans. And Apple, you know, I think about colors. I think about the logo, and I think about phones. That's the first <laughs> thing I think about is phones. What do you think about when it comes to Apple? I honestly, the logo, the the mm -hmm. the the, you know, the bitten logo. It's got a uh -huh. bite right in it. It's very mm -hmm. clear. It's very evident. Um, I mean, Apple. Apple is is a fantastic company in in what their branding is all about. They've built a luxury brand. Mm -hmm. uh, they weren't the first ones to create a phone, but what? King Adam here automatically associates phone with Apple, and a lot of people do, right? iPhone, yes, yeah. you know, throw them up. I'm sure everybody in our crowds got the iPhones or got some Apple products, right. you know. Uh, and, and that's because of their branding. They define their brand just like step number one, right? Branding tip number one is defining the brand and defining your strategy. Now, can you tell us, Adam, tell us a little bit more about how can somebody who's watching us right now, how can they, you know, who they're looking at, you know, building themselves, they're building a brand They're They're clearly not, you know, the Apple of the world, not right. yet. Right. Yeah. But they want to be, oh. they want to position themselves uh, and again, this this is not specific to any industry, but how can somebody define themselves, uh, define their strategy and their brand if they don't know what that is right now? Well, I got. I think you got to see what you stand for. And I think you have to keep it simple in the beginning, um, yeah. not compare yourself to some of the bigger brands. Like you were saying, you got to do. Yeah, exactly. You gotta how <laughs> you connect with people, and you got to think about keeping things easy and simple. And then also, you also got to think about what's your short term and your long term strategy. Yeah. You know. And so my thing is, when people start with brands, the best thing is to start with your name. Mm -hmm. Start with your name. So if you don't have a company name, a big company name, I wouldn't worry about it. Just start out with your name. Just start mm -hmm. with your name. And then go from there. And then you can say, okay, where am I interested in? Like, what is this brand going to take me? What type of problems this brand solve? Yep. And then you just start from there. It's like, oh, we, like, we're talking about haircuts, you know, 
super clips and things like that. So you can have a barber shop and you can say our brand, we actually, our slogan is that we make sure everyone gets a haircut and if it's not within an hour, it's 50% off or something like that. Or mm-hmm. you can say that, you know, our haircuts is very unique. It's because we do 25 different styles and then we have a magazine or, or a brochure that you can see it. And mm-hmm. uh, if you can use that in your branding and commercials and advertising and logo description. You can use yep. your personality. I would say your brand is a big part of your personality. Now, if you have yeah. energy, if you have excitement, that should be a part of your brand. That's that's what I would do. Keep it simple. That ma- that actually goes with you. Yeah. No, I uh, I agree. And 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 I think a really important thing about what you talked about is the brand is, mm-hmm. you know, is 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 what people connect with. And it's mm-hmm. it's in my opinion, it's the story, it's the vision, like you said, you know, defining what you are aiming to do. What problems, like Adam said, King Adam, uh, yeah. you know, are you solving in your business? You know, yeah. what is your mission? What is your slogan? What is your um, the name, gosh, when you said the name, that is some people don't care about the name of their business or like the logo. And it's like, no, 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 no. That is one of the most important parts of defining your brand is right. defining the name, defining the logo. You know, if you want to have a mascot, a slogan, you know, what is the visual, you know, depiction of what your mission is, you know, that's what the brand is all about. You know, that's what people fall in love with the (laughs) brand and they, and there are some brands like Supreme. Supreme is another one of those brands, right? Okay. Supreme is a brand that Mm -hmm. is a clothing line. Okay. And in all honesty, There are millions of clothing lines, right? But what did Supreme do? Supreme didn't say we're a clothing company. Supreme said we're a brand. Yeah. And that's what people follow. Supreme can slap their name on anything. If you go to Supreme's website, I'm pretty sure every time they do a new drop, they they put their their name on a different random product. Like sometimes it'll be like a lighter. It'll be a, you know, a, a, a... backpack you know just yeah. different the brand. products okay that they're they just slap their brand on and people buy them okay why mm-hmm. they've defined their brand and they define their strategy right and if people want to be associated with that brand like the nike shoes like the supreme logo you know like yeah. the apple product logo people get things because and they make them feel good about it make them feel a part of the company or part, part of the brand yeah i'm, I'm wearing some apple products or i got an yeah. apple phone some people yeah. say i have an apple one person said that to me the other day said i got an apple i was like now i was thinking and actually red apple or green apple he pulled out his phone and i was like <laughs> wow so that's how he associated with it i'm like apple and yeah. I was just like, at first, I was like, what is he talking about? But I kind of just let him continue. He pulled yeah. out his phone. I was like, oh, okay, I got it. I got it. So you call your phone Apple? And so, yeah, <laughs> yeah I got my Apple. So yeah. it's, it's very interesting. It's, it's, it's true. It's, it's very, true. It's like Coke. People think Coke is every soda. Some people, based on where you live and how you associate with those products, people want to Coke. I'm, I'm, you got a Coke? And then I'll look up and it's, it's actually a root beer. Pepsi. Or something. <laughs> it's a Pepsi. <laughs> yeah, so you yeah man. I mean, yeah. you know, it. some brands are so powerful, you know, that you just automatically, you don't even realize it, but they've subconsciously become right. a part of your life. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I was thinking of a brand right now and it just slipped my mind. Uh, but there's tons of brands that are like that. Coke, um, Kleenex, that's one. How many yeah. people don't say, I want a tissue, I want a Kleenex. give me a Kleenex? <laughs> yeah. Okay? Uh-huh. I, mean, I mean, really, think about that. Mm-hmm. How many people say, now that's, Kleenex is the brand, first yeah. of all, yeah. okay? But people now, because they've done such a great job branding, mm-hmm. people associate a tissue, if I had one here, I don't, uh, <laughs> yep, uh, right, right here. You do, you do have a Kleenex. 
Yes, I do. It actually is Kleenex brand, but, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, all right, most people refer to it as Kleenex, you know? Yeah. Um, and like you said, you know, most people, you know, uh, Coke, even though it's a Pepsi, uh, you know, that's what branding does when, and, and, and it, first of all, I also want to point that it doesn't happen overnight. You know, your branding and your imaging and everything, Coca-Cola didn't become Coca-Cola overnight. It is years and years and years yeah. of branding, right? And yeah. branding is a form of your marketing. It's a part of your marketing. And I essentially look at when I like define a customer's uh, objective, we look at the brand first and then all the pieces of the puzzle go around that brand. Right. And that's how right. I believe people, you know, really build powerful brands because if they associate their advertising with their brand and, and they use the the core principles of their brand and the and the core, you know, definitions the, the, the what they've defined their brand as in their advertising, in their marketing, in their you know retail stores, in their uh, radio bids, in their people who they sponsor, whatever, right? If mm -hmm. they associate all of that in their packaging, that's yeah. another form of branding. Packaging, mm -hmm. packaging is so key. So many people pass that up as just like they want to move quickly into launching a product or, or or releasing their product and they forget about spending the extra amount of money right investing the extra amount into that branding because that's yeah. one of the things that i think apple really caught my attention oh yeah definitely no question no question starbucks is another one yes starbucks, starbucks. Oh, my awesome. god i'm getting to starbucks i mean I'm Me getting the Starbucks. That's it. Yes. How yeah. many people say that? I'm I'm getting a Starbucks. What is a Starbucks? It's a mm. brand, but they're right. getting it. I'm getting an apple. What do you mean you're getting an apple? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's branding. That's what you want people to associate to your brand. So whatever product you're selling, you want to brand it to where people are eventually one day simply just referring to your brand as the product right yeah yeah so branding is strong you can use it in so many different ways um the brand can be so strong that you actually say the name and people associate it people automatically know what it is and yep. they say oh you mean coffee or you mean coke or you mean an iphone so yep. it's powerful if, if and that's the thing about it, is that that should be the goal is that you want the brand to not only describe what you do, but you want people to have the brand, hold the brand, think about it. Yep. I, mean, I think about music, you know, I'm thinking about artists. You know, I'm thinking there's so many artists going in my mind because I associate the brand with the music, with the artists. It's, it's so yeah. cool. Yeah, no, I mean, and and that's an artist is a brand. Like ask any executive in the record industry and they treat every artist as a brand and as a business, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and, and look at Kanye, that's another brand with yeah. Yeezys. Okay. Look at Jordan. That's another brand, right? Mm -hmm. People say I'm getting a Jordans. Yeah, that's true. You're right. No, you're getting sneakers. <laughs> you're getting Jordan shoes. No, right. I'm getting some Jordans, right? I'm gonna go cop me some Jordans. That's the power of branding, ladies and gentlemen. And so let's, you know, tip number one is define your brand and define your strategy. So what's tip number two for those who are wondering, okay, I've defined my brand, I've defined my strategy, but what are some things that can just differentiate me and separate me from the rest? I think number two, it can be so many different ways we can go at this because you know, I think about brand, I think about like being unique, being different, you know, having your voice. And it's very interesting. You put that on the screen. Be unique, be you. You know, it's interesting. I was not even, I was, we're on the same wavelength because I was saying it before you even put it down there. Because <laughs> I'm thinking about branding is that being unique and being you is so important because you don't want to be like the person next door. No. You don't want to be like somebody else. You don't want to be like somebody in the magazine or somebody you saw on TV. You want to define you. So you want to really, really dig deep, deep inside yourself yeah. and really explain your story, explain mm -hmm. your brand, explain why they should have this product, why they should enjoy this service. 
And then now you are starting to really connect with people because you are yourself. I love it. Mm -hmm. And and brands, same thing. Well, you know, this it, we're not just saying we're not just branding. Step number two, tip number two is not just talking about an individual brand. It's talking about your brand in general. Be unique. Be you. And why we say that is because a lot of the times, and, and King Adam said this earlier in the in the yeah. in the episode, is we compare to the bigger brands. And yeah. I I am I, listen. I have done that before, and I will say that when you start competing and comparing, okay, uh, you you take yourself out of your creative zone you are the greatest at what you do right there should be no reason for you to be in business or building something if you aren't prepared to build the greatest version of it right i mean you know people should never just start a business and i just want to be an average business you know um and so you have to define yourself as something bigger and if you can be unique and be you you can become that next big brand because the That's only right. way that that big brand became themselves was by being unique and being them, right? By defining who they were as a brand, what their image was, what their business was going to be, and making everything they did all about that. I agree with that. And then social media has really helped you connect with that together and allow you to be unique, like YouTube, like right now, we're on YouTube. It's loud that I can upload a video and just be unique and be me. Tell a story, sell a product, really illustrate a service, or even go in the kitchen and make some mashed potatoes. You know, I can really be unique Absolutely. with what I'm doing and use, I can use my hobbies, I can use my personality, and I can bring it in front of the camera. You know, so that's why social media really took off. Yes. Well, people are using social media because they can define the brand. And then number two, they can be unique within the brand and connect with the audience, build an audience, or you even start a tribe. It's so powerful. So social media being connected with it is really a good thing. And now more people are doing it more than ever now. Mm -hmm. And bringing on the point of your social media topic, that's so important because, you know, one of the things that uh, we talked about in episode one, right, was yeah. talking about how you can define uh, and separate yourself as a musician or an artist or an actor in the business in the industry and and part of that is the whole branding aspect is going out there and you know uh being different sharing you know we talked about in episode one and we're going to talk about it in episode two will smith you know an actor right yeah. he's already a legendary actor he's put out such amazing movies but like the guy has built such a powerful online social media presence that now we get to see the different parts of an actor's life that that 30 years ago you couldn't see your favorite actor's internal life what is going on what is going on in their home behind the scenes in uh, you know on the tours in the in the movie set for example mm -hmm. and that level of branding is new with social media yes. but it's so powerful in creating, and you said it perfectly, your tribe, right? Yeah. Creating the entire tribe, the community around your brand and around your business. And I promise you, if you do that, you know, and you dedicate yourself and you commit to it, eventually you'll get to a point where it'll be like critical, critical mass. Your brand mm -hmm. is just going to take mm -hmm. off. And everything you touch is just going to turn into money. Everything you touch is going to turn into gold and diamonds and platinum and whatever else you want. Because at that point, your brand is so powerful and captivating that businesses, other people, other businesses and other brands are so powerfully attracted to you that they're going to want you to now be a part of their business or become a strategic marketing piece of their, of their business. And now all of a sudden, all these opportunities start coming to you, but they won't come to you if you don't build a brand. If only thing you focus on is the business and you don't actually think that the business is the brand, they are the same thing. The same thing. Right. But uh, people focus on the day-to-day -day aspects of the business. Let's clarify that. If you focus on only the day-to-day, -day, like fulfilling the customers and stuff, the, the things that you should automatically already be doing, 
Mm-hmm. That's your only focus. And you don't think about how can I brand in every step? Right. You, you, you are going to stay the small business. You're going to, you're going to remain a small influencer. For example, you're going to remain a small business. You're going to remain small in your, in your sphere of influence. That's true. That That's very true that you're saying about that, that branding being you, you got to think it's depending. I, I want to think big and depending on how you think as well. Do you want to do you, what do you think this brand's gonna go? Do you are you thinking big down the road? Are you thinking, okay, I'm just gonna be a small channel or a small social media presence? You gotta be thinking big because what happens that you put something out on social media using your brand, and then all these people kind of just start following you, but in your mindset, you're thinking you wasn't prepared for this to really blow up. So think I like what you said earlier, saying that your brand. You're, you got to think of your brand the next level. You got to think about, okay, this brand is going to be big. Yep. Yes, I know I just started it, but it's going to be big and yep. it's going to be unique and it's going to be fun. It's going to be about my personality and about the service and about the problem or problems that I will yep. solve. Amen. And and if you do that, you are doing branding tip number one, which you're defining your brand and your strategy and being unique and being you is what is going to create the reason why people are going to follow you. If Apple go into the iPhone, if <laughs> Apple created a, a, a phone, just like everybody else, right. There would be no Apple today. They'd probably oh. be bankrupt. No, you got, definitely wouldn't be an Apple today. You know, um, no, it definitely would not be, you know, so, and that defined their brand because they're unique, their mission statement, how they connect with customers, they always coming out with a new type of phone. You know, they're expanding in terms of like their awareness and then their marketing and, and you know, they just, everything, customer service, everything. So new products is always coming out. They've got a definitely a plan on how they want to do that. And but like you said, I think their logo and what they stand for definitely makes them a really strong brand. You know, another brand we didn't actually mention and we should be mentioning is Tesla. Yes, that Tesla. is one of the strongest brands in the world right now and will continue to remain uh as as such it they have created a cult like following and that is what a brand can do and that's the same thing with apple apple has a cult like following as well right Pe- there are people who just buy everything apple right and and if you say anything against apple there are people who just you know lash against you that's a cult right if you say anything against a tesla Right, they're the Tesla fanboys and people, right? Will come oh, out yeah. there and start saying things. No, no, Tesla this, Tesla that, right? That's the brand that they've created around Tesla. That's so powerful because now because they have a brand, if you if you actually look, Tesla hasn't spent money, much money on marketing in their mm-hmm. 10 years of business. Okay. In, in terms of in terms of compared to you know how much the big three uh ford chrysler gm spent um mm-hmm. in comparison to how much even bmw and those companies spent tesla spent minuscule small bits of 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 of, of into that and right. it was because they've built the brand from the beginning and the brand was to revolutionize everything and even when nobody trusted the brand or uh, supported the brand. The brand remained unique, and they remained true to themselves and the, the 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 definition that they've defined themselves to be. They define their brand. They define their strategy from day one when Elon Musk came in, and this is what they are today. Yeah, he changed the game when he basically, you know, really really took it seriously and. I think of luxury cars when I think about Tesla. I think about fast cars. I think about Elon Musk. I think about his story. I think about the fact that. Think think about how smart Elon Musk has now created a chain of companies that as each of them grow, they all become more and more powerful because of the branding connection, right? When people think Tesla, they think uh, uh, SpaceX. They now think Neuralink, which is the new, right. the new, uh, one of the newer companies that Elon Musk has has, has founded, right? They think about uh, the Boring Company. They think about Solar City, right, and all mm-hmm. the solar powers and panels and such, and, and and so on and so forth. So all of that 
is is branding. That's there is branding is is one hundred percent what is being done. Even though Elon Musk is not going to come out outright and say <laughs> it, he's got a very powerful marketing team, and yeah. he does he markets he markets silently. I know they market, um, but it's more PR than anything, right? Strategically placing. Mm -hmm. I I feel like Elon Musk's marketing is more PR than anything. How can we get the most publicity out (laughs) of whatever it is that we are doing? Because free publicity, no matter whether it's bad or good, is better Mm -hmm. than no publicity, right? So Elon Musk, their marketing strategy, their branding is, is how can we create things that are us that are be unique be you think about their cyber truck right yeah the entire cyber truck launch people should study that no matter what industry you are in (laughs) yeah yeah it's definitely unique and powerful. powerful man that launch first and foremost they came out he used the technique of the fashion companies you ever seen the fashion runway models and you ever pay attention to the the garbage that they're wearing right like you ask yourself like what idiot would ever buy that outfit right and the purpose of that model show the fashion show Mm -hmm. is not to sell you the what's on the on the models it's a lot of the times to get a reaction Yes. Whether you hate it or you love it, we want you to be at a, a extreme reaction, right? We want you to react to it. It's very simple, right? Yeah. We and 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 most people will react if they are angered, they hate something that's ugly, right? If it's average, most people may not have a reaction at all, and it sure as heck isn't going to get clicked, right? And so, <laughs> <That's true. laughs> right. So as a as a fashion company, right? We know that if we're designing something for the runway, it's got to be something that's going to that's why I, I, trust me, for those of you who are wondering what I'm talking about right now, go and look it up. Go and look one of the most recent model shows, okay? It doesn't matter, Gucci, whoever it is, and you will find that they have outfits there that they've never sold. It's, it's a one for one Nobody other than that model who did the runway is the one who wore it. They will never sell it because they know it's extremely hideous and most people will not ever have an opportunity to actually wear such a hideous thing, right? right. So, but, but because it's so hideous and, and extraordinary, right? <laughs> people yeah. click on it. People talk about it. Publishers publish that because mm-hmm. an image – of a lady wearing some ugly dress is going to get more attention than her wearing an elegant dress that would normally be worn at the evening, you know, in a dinner situation. That's true. That's true. That's it's very the attention. It gets people's attention. You're right. So and what then- did Elon Musk do? He did the same thing. The cyber truck. Think about mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. You either hated it mm-hmm. or you loved it. Yep. He is the same business strategy. It's the same branding strategy being used. He used it in cars, okay? But it's yeah. the same thing used in fashion. True. I mean, that's, okay? a, that's, that's a good point. Here's another one. You don't see it often in every runway show, but sometimes you'll see something like a model will fall or something like that, right? Right. Yep. Just like the cyber truck. He went to break the window, this bulletproof window, and it broke. It did the opposite of what it was supposed to do. Okay. But it gets publicity. You know, if a Victoria's Secret model falls on her face, it's going to be talked about. It's going to be written about. Okay. And here's Mm -hmm. the thing for a Victoria's Secret is if it's written about and talked about and you didn't have to pay for it, that's free publicity. And if they're wearing Victoria's Secret or there's any kind of branding or mention of Victoria's Secret, you've done your job well done. That is all that's a good point. I mean, and uh, that's why branding is important. That's why defining your your actually your uniqueness style is important. Yeah, 
I agree 100 percent, man so what's the next thing all right so now you've gone ahead i i, I have a brand and i've defined okay. my brand and i've defined my strategy i've gone ahead yeah. and i've ensured that defining in defining my brand and my strategy i'm unique and i'm myself right and the brand mm -hmm. that we're creating is that what do i have to do next huh surprise me on this one i think i know but surprise me on number three Cause there's so many ways I can think I can do this. And I'm thinking about like trust, some type of trust and, oh, here you go. Create trust, build that powerful loyalty. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Cause now the reason why I think trust and loyalty is important to go along with the brand is because people follow you and buy from you. If they know, like, and trust you, your loyalty. Yeah. What you stand for? Are you gonna be there when you said you're gonna do? Are you gonna actually, you know, call me and communicate with me when you said you're going to? Is the price gonna be what you say it's gonna be? That's you a know? big one. That's a yeah, big one. Absolutely. I'm yeah. actually in process of getting a car right now, and there's a company that, uh, mm -hmm. you, you know, whether or not you have a disclaimer or not, it's still sleazy to tell mm -hmm. me a price and then. It's a different price when I get to your dealership. Yeah. You know, and yeah. and then and then this dealership particularly, you know, they like to say, well, it's in the very, very small fine print that you mm -hmm. actually have to click on to open up the fine print. And then the fine print says that this price includes a 20 percent down payment. Yeah. Well, man. Come on, man. Don't mm -hmm. be advertising that as your marketed <laughs> price. If that's not your marketed price, that's not. That's not your actual price. That's your price minus my 20% down payment, which, you know, so I, I think 100% being able to build that trust, you know, one thing that I think people uh, mm -hmm. underestimate, underestimate is the power of reviews. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. That's a great one. Yeah. I mean... That how many brands out there, and I see this happen a lot with small businesses, you know, the local businesses, sometimes when I go out and maybe it's a restaurant or, you know, uh, uh, just a, a retail store or whatever, mm -hmm. I notice it a lot in like the customer service in the last 10 years has just completely crashed and declined. Mm -hmm. And even with big brands, you know, I'm not going to just single out small business owners here, even big brands, you know, um, I used to be with T-Mobile. They used to have such great customer service. And in the last five years, it's been going downhill in my opinion, right? Um, not just T-Mobile, but just in general, like, you know, I feel like, you know, when you go to a, a fast food or a drive-through, you know, like, you used to have a situation where you could get good customer service, but now it's almost like every time you go through a drive through the other, the person on the other side hates what they're doing. They hate their life. They hate uh, y y their job. They, and then they, they provide terrible customer service. And, you know, a lot of these newer companies, if you have right. a new business, if you're a newer entrepreneur, like, Think about your reputation. It's so key. And, and a lot of people like with online businesses, you know, uh, don't provide real good re returns or refund policies. You are mm -hmm. killing your trust. You are killing your brand reputation, right? Because mm -hmm. number three, creating trust, trust and building that, uh, you know, building that actual powerful loyalty has a lot to do with. Uh, the reputation of your brand and while people think about your brand, you know, I'm going to give you an example, Costco, yeah. Costco. Yeah. Or the loyalty right? and trust. Oh, absolutely. Loyalty and trust. But let me tell you, well, one of the things that uh, when I first found out about Costco and it amazed me was that like people could literally return an item they bought seven years ago today and get their full money back. After they used it for seven yeah. years, they could come back into a Costco and say, I'd like to return this. And Costco says, sure, absolutely. Sure, why not? No ifs, ands, or buts. Why? Because they understand the investment yep. into the customer. Yeah, they think of long term, a long term. Long term. That's what Amazon, Amazon is another one. Okay. Uh, Nordstrom. 
The one thing that I've always remembered about Nordstrom is that their return policy says that if you bring in a product from a, a completely different store, mm -hmm. from Dillard's, from JCPenney, from Target, yep. you bring it in with your research, receipt to Nordstrom, they will give you money for that item, even though they never sold it to you in the first place. Now, why do they do that? Because they understand that 80% of the time, those people are going to take that money that you just handed to them and they're mm -hmm. going to come and they're going to spend it right in your store. Yep. And you've built loyalty. You've built a customer who trusts you because they know that if they immediately want a refund, you're going to provide it to them and that you're going to stand behind your products. And even if it's not your products, you're going to take care of your customers and refund them anyways. That mm -hmm. is building powerful brand loyalty, brand trust, reputation. And especially as things are going more e-commerce, I feel like people need to just like, you need to get away from these old school marketing gimmicks of hiding price and hiding behind fine print. And uh -huh. none of that stuff is going to work moving forward, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, no. Moving no. forward, I want you to tell me your price on your website. Because that's one of my biggest factors, and I have no interest in having to sit and talk to one of your salespeople just to find out price of your product or your service. Because here's the thing. My time is valuable, and so is yours. And if your price is out of my budget, there is no need to talk about all the features you provide inside of your product. That's true. That's if, true. If your price is just unreasonable in a consumer's mind, there's nothing you can tell them that's going to overstretch their budget. If 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 you're selling haircuts at a barbershop and your price is $20, and most people know price of, of a haircut is about $20, but your haircut is $75, okay? I would like to know that ahead of time. I don't care that you you massage my head and you, you, know, you do some crazy stuff on yeah. the haircut because I get an amazing haircut. This is $18. Okay, eighteen dollars. Now, <laughs> my point is, is if I'm shopping for a new place to get my hair cut, I have a range that I'm comfortable with. If yep. it's outside of that comfort range, and that comfort range, by the way, has a low and a high and a mid range. So, like, you know, a high price haircut would be like forty five to me, you know. And I've had forty five, fifty dollar haircuts, but I kid you not, this eighteen dollar haircut, it, it it was just so much better. Um, you know, than than some of these more uh, higher priced cuts that I've had. But my point is, is I have a range as a consumer, and mm -hmm. I want to know, and I want to be able to when I'm doing my shopping, which most people do at 3 a.m. or on the toilet, or you know, <laughs> uh, on the couch, or you know, while they're in class, or whatever, while they're at work, right? People want to do that on their own time, you know. Okay. They, do. they and, do. And if you could provide them with what they want to make their buying decision, you're going to speed up and increase your conversion. And you're also going to help in building that trust and building that powerful, loyal customer base. Because like Amazon made it so easy for us to buy from them and made it so easy for us to Thank return, you. made it so easy for us to... Uh, uh, mm -hmm get discounts, to get faster delivery, to be able to self-manage our customer support. And you the know? customer should be your biggest seller. So if the loyalty and the trust is there, they're going to tell other people, other family members, other friends, yeah, man, Amazon is great. You know, they got a good mission statement, they had a good customer service policy, refund policy. So the customer can be the biggest, actually, marketer for your company. Mm -hmm. Because they are good referrals because they get in good service and with no loyalty in your and your trust, just like everything you've been talking about in terms of all the brands that you're saying, is that then that person is gonna tell that person, that person gonna tell that yep. person. A lot of yep. times you don't have to really market, you just have good customer service, good refund mm -hmm. policy, treat yep. people with respect. Yep. And then the word will travel around. I, I mean, I agree with that. I agree mm -hmm. with that. You yeah. know, so I mean so Tesla, get back going to them. Okay. Again, who's their most important marketer? The customer, you know? Mm -hmm. 
And they give you an amazing experience because it's unique, right? There's no dealerships. Their dealerships are a mall store, you know? Mm -hmm. It's a store just like the, the Nike store or whatever store. You know, it's a different experience. You know, the whole purchase process and the trade-in mm -hmm. process and everything is done digitally, e-commerce. That's why Tesla is so powerful and people are so underestimating the power of Tesla uh i mean you know they just they get it they they understand that they are themselves they are unique they are them they knew mm -hmm. it from the moment they started and they have a mission this their same mission that they define is the same mission still to this day which is to push the industry of electric forward into the future okay Absolutely. their mission is not even a, a self centered mission it's a mission of like we don't care what happens we just want to push electric and sustainability forward that's right. a mission that people can now stand behind because they know that tesla for example okay and there's a reason why people like tesla so much guys and we're explaining this to, to you yeah. tesla believes so much in their mission that they opened up their patents they opened up their intellectual property to the rest of the industry because yeah, they realized that if they they're they're so innovative if they were to lock in their innovation behind intellectual property trademarks mm -hmm. and patents and so on and so forth that they would slow down the growth of the industry and see it's so funny i was thinking about this uh today actually believe it or not in the shower I know it sounds really weird, but I had this thought and now it, it's just connecting, man. I was just getting ready for our show. But in the shower, my thought was very simple. Uh, and and I guess Elon Musk had a lot to do with it. But I was thinking about like what, what Elon Musk is doing with moving the industry forward. Why is he doing that? And I, I, I go back to Microsoft. Why did Microsoft bail out Apple? OK, most people don't know this, but but if it wasn't for Microsoft, which is obviously the number one competitor to Apple, if it wasn't for Microsoft, Apple would be toast. There would be no iPhones. There would be no pods. There would be no anything that you currently use today. Uh, Apple would be non-existent. Apple would be a company people would talk about of like, oh, a company that could have been Amazon. I mean, uh, Microsoft bailed them out. Why? OK. Let me right. explain something to you here, guys. And I want to, this is why Tesla is so powerful as well. And what they're doing in the branding is, is they've realized that it's not, it's, it will, it will cost a lot of money, a lot of advertising, a lot of marketing, a lot of everything to influence a mainstream takeover of electric. But if they can create the industry and then support the other cast members of the industry, then those people can go out there, the other people, other companies, and do their own marketing and advertising. Therefore, right. Tesla is getting more possible customers without actually okay. having to advertise and market to them because yep. what they're doing is they're creating the market and they're allowing the market to expand, right? If, mm -hmm. if an industry is a $500 million industry and you want to build a multi-billion dollar company in that industry, then what you have to do is you have to catapult that industry and scale its growth. Because if you can make that industry worth $2 billion, $5 billion, $10 billion, right. then your percentage of the market share becomes more valuable. And so... Tesla is doing just that. They understand that they're going to have a lion's share of the EV market because they do. They started it. They founded it. Okay. It's just that's going to happen. So Tesla is now, what they did is they unleashed their innovation, but their years ago innovation. They innovated this years ago, but now they're providing that years ago innovation to companies to be able to create competition right it's not really competition but they're creating competition because that competition creates further um uh influence on the industry and and brings more people it attracts perfect word right. it attracts more yeah. people to the industry therefore the industry gets bigger and bigger and if you are the best right i love that 
Do you know and, and how, you know, I thought, of, uh, 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 I didn't think about this idea. It was, um, uh, I was reading, I don't know what I was reading. It was something, uh, maybe Wall Street Journal, something like four or five years ago. And it was talking about why boxers still get 20, 30, 40, 50 million dollars a fight and why people in MMA in the UFC still don't even get like a million dollars a fight. Mm -hmm. And the analysis, okay um was very simple and it basically said well ufc if you look at what ufc has done is they've acquired all of their competition yeah okay and so what they've done is they've consolidated all of these different rings and all of these um arenas into one brand ufc and the issue with that is sometimes people just don't want ufc and they want to just watch something else sometimes People don't want to, you know, just be stuck with one thing. Or sometimes people have already determined they don't like you, That's right? True. That, but they that. like the sport. They like the idea. And they're willing mm -hmm. to watch it somewhere else. And so when you compare boxing, if you look at boxing, boxing has so many different federations, so many yeah. different leagues, so many different boxing championships. And what they can do is they can then put – this league's champion against this league's champion. And now what they're doing is, is this league, all the money in advertising and marketing that they've done to create a fan base is now mm -hmm. gaining exposure to this league. And yep. this league, all the advertising and marketing that they've done is now giving exposure to this league. And so they're building the industry as a whole. They're building boxing as a whole, the sport of boxing. Mm -hmm. Whereas UFC, UFC is... Now, the only one who's putting up money in building up the mixed martial arts MMA sport. You see, if, mm -hmm. if there was competition for UFC, it would actually be more beneficial. They need UFC needs to stop buying all these other MMA and 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 and, and, and you know leagues. And yeah. what they need to do is they need to let one or two leagues thrive. You know, if, if, if we look at anything, even wrestling, you know, there used to be a time where I think it was WWF and then it became yeah. WWE, yeah. right? But there was also multiple other leagues. There was the ECW, I mean, right? Uh, there was other, there was other leagues. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so because this league ECW was going around the country or going around the world and they were doing their wrestling show. They were bringing more fans to the, to, to the industry. Yeah. And then because WWF was doing that and, and all yeah. the other ones were doing that each person, each competitor is doing their job in bringing attention and attraction into the industry. And if you're smart enough, you realize that that's why I said earlier, competitors there's no such thing as competition if you understand that you can use their growth against them if you define your brand and your strategy you be you you be unique and you simply focus on building that powerful loyalty you can set yourself up to get all of their fans yeah and that you know that leads me to like the fourth one we we're talking about in terms of a platform that's what i would think after i define my brand and number two when i'm thinking i'm being unique i'm being you and number three i'm thinking loyalty and trustworthy now i need to find a platform where my brand fits the best yep. and yep. so now with social media obviously you can choose so many different platforms that you want to go ahead and illustrate your brand and it's very very powerful youtube is definitely a, one of the above it's the second highest search engine on the internet google youtube you got facebook you got instagram in yep. LinkedIn, there's so many other ones. So yeah. choose one actually platform and and go good, get good at that one, and then move on to the next one. And it's interesting about a long online platform. I think it depends on your brand. Yes, it really does. It does because yes. sometimes your brand may fit more a little bit more on you know TikTok. Maybe your brand is more on TikTok because your videos and the way you illustrate yourself, it's more for that audience that's on TikTok. Yes, and so absolutely. You TikTok. So your every platform may not fit your necessary brand. And I think that you know doing your research and also just being honest with yourself 
and saying, you know what? I don't want really to fit on Twitter. I think I fit better on YouTube because I can use video. I can use audio. I can mm -hmm. talk to people into the camera like we're doing right now. We yeah. can actually teach people how to do stuff, you know, by showing a screen or just showing the whiteboard, get the whiteboard and actually show you how to put together a funnel together or something like that. Or go in the kitchen to make yeah. some French toast and some bacon, man. That's oh, amazing. man, you're making me hungry, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so it depends. I mean, what are your what are your views on online platforms that fits your brand? What is, you, what is your So um, I think you're 100% right. I mean, you know, I think a lot of new brands, what they think, and it goes to, again, we said it already twice, enough competing or comparing to the bigger brand. So a lot of people will start off and they think that they've got to be on all the platforms. That's true. Okay. And I'm going to, I'm going to be, you know, the first to tell you that you are going to spread yourself way too thin yep. and you know, that's going to prevent yourself from actually focusing and being able to laser target and laser grow one platform. Yep. And once you, once you take off on one platform, just keep in mind, if you're smart enough, you can then diversify that across all platforms. Let me give you an example about why what I mean by that. Um, dog face, have you you know about that skateboarder uh, mm -hmm. skateboarding? Uh, uh, Fleetwood Mac brought it back to number one. I mean, yeah. uh, on number twenty nine on the Billboard charts after forty years, right? Yeah. Um, Cranberry, the juice, the company, like <laughs> that one fifteen or twenty three second clip changed that entire man's life forever. Dogface, okay, hired a company, smart, because obviously um, the, the things that he's been able to, to capture and capitalize on in the last three weeks is, is you know, truly tremendous. Um, right. And it has a lot to do with literally the management company that he ended up going with, learning, uh, I mean, uh, taking advantage of that. But if you look, he's got over 200,000 subscribers on YouTube alone in the last two weeks. Um, he has millions on Instagram. He's got millions on TikTok, and so he's he's literally he he blew up on TikTok, and then it just goes everywhere. Yeah, it just expands because people people want to find your brand. You know, they'll type your name in, um, and then you can get all these platforms and really take advantage of their platforms and their benefits and their yeah. and good way of marketing yourself. Good way, of really. Now you're a content creator. So now you have all this content. You can you can put all your content on all those platforms. You can really do some really cool features with YouTube. And then I'm going to take the YouTube content, move it over to TikTok, then TikTok, move it over to like Facebook Lives or something like that. So yeah, I, I think that's that is a very good analogy yeah. that you that you brought those up there because you know it doesn't take much really to really get yourself out there. And then if it blows up, then you're like, okay, now. I got this platform, and now what do I do next? Which is a good problem to have, to be honest with you. Right, right. Yeah, one hundred percent. I agree. You know, I mean, you want to be able to. Okay, how can I monetize this more? Because now you yeah. have something. But if you go out there and you attempt to be on all the platforms at once, rather than just finding that one or two, you know, platforms that like really just speak to you and and resonate with your brand and your mission, like. If you are aiming to sell an e-commerce product, you should be on Instagram. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. a platform you should be on over YouTube, right? YouTube is more long form content, like the type of content we're creating right now. You know what I'm saying? But like you said, if you have if you have a product that's very easily um, uh, like describable, like it, it doesn't take a lot to show how the product works. TikTok mm -hmm. is perfect because it's 60 seconds or less videos, right? That's generally what TikTok's about. So you have to understand, like, you have to first define your brand and your strategy, right? You have to figure out what you're doing. But once you've defined that, then it'll point you to the right direction of what platform you should be on based around what kind of content you can create. Like, for example, you know, uh, we talked about cooking, right, earlier. If, for example, we're selling a, a cooking pot set, that would probably be better on YouTube. Yes. Okay. Yes. Or Facebook, right? Because it's a longer form type content, right? It'll be 15, 20, 30 minutes of us cooking it up and cooking up in this pot set. 
showing people how the pots are and all this stuff, right? That's longer form content. That's the content. Mm -hmm. So you want you, you don't want to be on TikTok. That's not a TikTok type of no. uh, of platform, right? So you got to define that brand and your strategy, which will help point you in the direction of the platform. And the recommendation for sure is to stick with one or two and just really passionately grow that. And I think this kind of just caters in or, or moves us in, transitions us into number five, branding tip number five. Staying consistent with everything we just said and more. Man, I was just thinking about that because you were talking about one platform <laughs> And I was thinking about being consistent with that platform, which basically you want your brand and your strategy and your trust and your identity to be consistent, you know, yep. with everything you go across. So yep. that's so important because a lot of times when you do start a brand or a business as an entrepreneur is that you're thinking, OK, I need to do everything, you know, all at once. Sometimes that's what I thought when I first began as an entrepreneur. But the thing is, was <laughs> yes. one thing at a time. Yeah, try to do yes. everything. You know, yes. take the kids. You know, you know, go yes. ahead, milk the cow. Or, you know, everything. <laughs> you know, you do everything. Making the bread. You know, making. You know, making little TJ his lunch for. You're you the know, whole restaurant, man. You're the waiter, the waitress. You're the host. You're the kitchen. You're the prep. You're the dessert maker. You're too much, man. Yeah, it's too way too much. But then again, that I will start not to be consistent with that because I'm doing way too much. And yes. so when I took some stuff out of to, out of the equation, I just focus on one or two simple things. I got my platform. I've got my brand strategy all together. Now I just got to be consistent what I'm doing. Even though if I choose a platform like YouTube, I got to think about how often do I want to upload videos on YouTube. Sure. Yes, and I got to absolutely. be consistent with that. Or if I'm doing a Facebook live or if I'm doing an Instagram live, you know, I need to be very specific on when I'm going on and I need to be able to be consistent on how I'm delivering. You don't want to be different. Like you do a video Monday and then on Wednesday, you're completely different. And so you want to be consistent in what you're doing in your brand and in your business. No question. Yeah, I would definitely say a schedule is key. Um you know, uh, for people who are wanting to stay consistent. Um, and, and, and for those of you who are not really um, good with schedules, what I would do is I would set bite-sized goals, right? So, yeah. you know, um, and, and one of the things is like, also, I, I, I want to give some people here like a tip, an influencer tip that most people don't know about is that most influencers pre-record stuff and like don't release it for weeks. So they'll have content lined up for next week and it's not the stuff they recorded this week. You know what I'm saying? A lot of the times they in, in keeping that staying consistent, they're making a bunch of content, but they're, they're creating a schedule of releasing that content instead of just putting it all out there. Um, and that helps a lot of people in being able to stay consistent because sometimes you wake up and, you know, today I might say, you know, I want to make a video today. And if I leave it up to me waking up today, I may not wake up in the, in the highest of spirits enough right. for me to be able to record a video and I may need to work on myself and work on my energies and my vibration, meditate, get my spirits up. Absolutely. And 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 if I don't have anything prepared uh, or pre-recorded or something, you know, a, a bullet in the chamber, if I if you will, right? If I don't have anything ready to pull the trigger, then you right. you you get off of that staying consistency and and staying, you know, you you, you get off of the the uh the momentum chain of sure. building that and building your platform and building your business up so you know the staying consistent i think is just uber important man so many people need to oh. really truly like step number five i know or tip number five i know it seems like duh but like trust me the one thing like my channel could right now have hundreds of thousands of subscribers if i stayed consistent I, I, I treated it as a part time. I never even it was like a it was like a hot side side a project. And the difference is, is the people who did treat their channel with consistency and, and built something 
full time, uh, those people, I could see them leaping my channel. And, you know, I'm unable to hate on that. It's my <laughs> lack of consistency and their lack, I mean, and their, um, uh, their push of consistency that got them to where they're at. You know, if you ask most people who are successful, consistency is the key, is the will to continue to go and push and pull and grind. And no matter what, no matter if people all think you're an idiot, you're doing everything wrong, you know, you're never going to survive. I mean, think about Elon Musk. Everybody doubted oh, yeah. him. You're not going to make it. Your tech company is going to, your, your company is going to go bankrupt. You're going to get, you're going to lose money. You're going to run out of steam. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. And who cares what they have to say? I know what I'm doing. We've defined our brand. We've defined our strategy. We've defined, you know, who we are. We know we're unique. We know we're going to be who we are. We're building trust with the people who do believe in us, even if it's a small group of 100 people. We're going to build that trust and that loyalty with those people. And then we're going to go and we're going to choose our online business and platforms. <laughs> and we're going to go out and we're going to tell people like Elon Musk on Twitter, right? One of his platforms. And then we're going to stay consistent with our mission, with our vision, with our process, with our 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 what we tell people, with our production, and it just all just keeps coming in. And and you know, innovation, innovate. You know, be innovative. That's where the whole step two, oh, yeah. tip yeah. two, being unique and being you. It's all about innovating. Innovate yourself. You know, change all the dynamics. Change yourself. And sometimes we get to a point like you know, where you have to rebrand yourself and sometimes you have to recreate yourself as well, you know, or pivot. Okay. It's one of the 48 laws of power is, you know, uh, sometimes you have to recreate yourself. And, you know, for example, with the world King, uh, we are recreating everything with the world King. We're changing the logo. We're going to change the branding. We have changing the website. We're changing it all. So that logo that you see right here, Mm -hmm. Those are all, and, and right here, this is all going to go away, and these are now going to become limited edition prints. So, uh, you know, for Love those it. of you watching, you probably <laughs> should go pick up some of the merch before it sells out. But okay. what we're doing is, is the, 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 the retiring of this logo provides us with an opportunity now to create a, a, a limited supply and an increased demand of a product right? Mm -hmm. Therefore, creating more rarity, therefore creating more of a buzz also, and mm -hmm. also gives us an opportunity to relaunch. So now we can take all the email lists and the customers and everything that we've built with the first version of the brand. And now mm -hmm. as we build and launch the second version of the brand and go into 2.0, right? We're going in there with a whole bunch of new customers, a whole bunch of new members, a whole bunch of new followers and subscribers. But now we're reinventing ourselves. We're changing everything. You know, what you're used to with the old World King and the World King brand is mm -hmm. going to be completely different. Okay. You know, reinventing yourself also is right. a key. And I think a bonus tip that we can add here on branding is, you know, reinventing yourself and staying innovative. Oh, you know? yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Definitely want to be innovative and being unique with it and always be thinking, always be willing to learn, keep your mind empty. Always have this analogy, always keep your cup empty, mm -hmm. you know, because there's always going to be information that you need to do. The industry is always changing. Yes, and it is. Want, and reinventing yourself, that's a really good idea because, you know, new logo, new image, new color, maybe new color. And it, and it gives somebody an opportunity yep. to like really impact and really connect with that new brand because that newness people like the fresh new stuff sometimes mm -hmm. and it's a good job for you for you in terms of product creator and a creator where you know what i'm going to make a decision to do that that's another key thing is making that decision that mm -hmm. this brand is going to work or we need to make the change of this brand yep. to be able to connect and to be able to illustrate what we do on an everyday basis. So that's yeah, all about being consistent with your thinking, too. Man, <laughs> hey, if you are watching this right now, I just want you to just write down in the comments, let us know what you thought about this video. I feel like yeah. we've dropped so much knowledge, so many gems 
If oh, you're yeah. watching this right now, I hope you've received so much value that the courses that you've probably spent hundreds and thousands of dollars on, you haven't even received a minute percentage of that because we're dropping so much knowledge and wisdom on these marketing shows. Uh, we really, again, don't have a name for the show, so we're just going to call it the show like King Adam said in the beginning. Uh, so this is just, uh, you know, episode number two. If you guys enjoy this, uh, I know I definitely enjoyed uh, talking to you uh, today about these five tips for branding. We're going to have a lot of cool stuff coming on future shows. And remember, in the next two to three episodes, we will begin to take the show live, which means you, yes, yeah. you, you will yeah. be able to actually engage with us. And so when we talk about these different tips, when we talk about these different brands or these businesses, or we bring stuff up, you are now going to be able to be involved and we're going to be involved with our audience and just build yeah. something very powerful. We want this community and this tribe to be a very powerful community of global entrepreneurs, people who are sharing the, the, the knowledge, the wisdom, the experience, mm -hmm. the strategies, the the ways that work for me that may work for you, right? Not everything I do is going to work for you and vice versa, right? But if I can share something that works for you, that worked for me, and save you that time that it took me to get to that point, right? And, and we can work together as a network, right? As, as a chain link. Think of it. We work together then we're only going to make our network more and more powerful. Going back to what we talked about earlier with all the, how Tesla and how Microsoft kept oh, yeah. Apple around, right? It's because they wanted that network. They wanted it to be bigger. Same thing with what we're doing. We're sharing with you guys our intellectual knowledge. We're sharing with you guys our, our know-how, our strategies. We're sharing with you guys. We're taking you alongside the journey with us because- yeah, Absolutely. You know, what we want to do is obviously we're creating our own brands and, and we're showing you how to do what we're talking to you about. But we also want to empower you because, you know, we may be talking to the next Elon Musk. You may be watching us right now, the next Elon Musk, the next Bill Gates, the next Jeff Bezos, right? And we want to inspire you to keep going. We want to inspire you to, to, to implement the strategies to get your innovation, your mm. brand, your product, your service. We want it to get attention because the difference between the most successful and the least successful is the level of attention that the world gives to their business, their brand, their service. It's that simple. Okay. And I'm going to end on the words of Lil Wayne. Go ahead. I tried to pay attention, but attention paid me. He sure did. Oh, I love that. He sure did say that. And I, man, you got to go by that and just believe in it. Because yeah, the Wayne is definitely, definitely something special. Absolutely. Well, hey, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. My name is Fadi Haniwini, World King here with King Adam Shelton. King Adam Shelton, let us know where we can subscribe to you. We'll definitely make sure to put it in the video description, yeah. but let us know. Where can we subscribe to you? How can we follow you? How can we, uh, you know, uh, get a part of your content? Because he, he puts out so much content on his YouTube channel that is so valuable and just uh, they're bite-sized educational videos. Um, and I, I, I personally think uh, you can learn quite a bit from him. So how can we find you? Where are you? And um, just tell us a little bit more about how we can do that. Sure, no problem. I'm on YouTube, so you can just type in Adam Shelton. We maybe have it somewhere on the screen here. Go right to the link right at you, and you just click on there to subscribe to the channel. And I upload videos on a weekly basis, you know, three to four videos a week, educational videos, videos about you know inspiration, entrepreneurship, attraction marketing and also about branding, which was the topic we talked about today. So yes. I, yeah, just follow me on YouTube and you'll go on the journey with me as well. And of course, on this station as well with World King and going in and delivering constant content. There you and go.
<laughs> hey, that's all it is. It takes we, you know, it takes the consistency, like we said, branding tip number five, and and uh, just like we're telling it to you, we are implementing it in our lives. So, with that being said, we want to just sign off, say thank you so much, and we are eternally grateful for each and every single one of you. If you enjoyed this episode, let us know in the comments below what you would like us to talk about in another episode. If you have any questions or any concerns, or maybe we didn't answer anything in this particular episode that you want more information on. Again, write it in the comment below because we do read these comments and they do provide us with our influence for future episodes. So we do read every single comment that you guys make on our videos. And also, if you did enjoy the video, please make sure to consider to hit that thumbs up, right? Light it up blue. Let the YouTube algorithm, right? The almighty algorithm know that you love our content and you want more of our content in your feed. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and hit the all bell notifications. And of course, do that for King Adam Shelton as well. Absolutely. Peace and love. I appreciate it. See you later.